Hi, I'm Paul Clutch99, and I'm here on an interview with Mason McFreakin. Yep, thanks for having me, Justin. Thanks for coming on. So, first off, as a kid, did you ever think that you would ever get to play sports professionally for a living? Specifically yeah, I, baseball? Uh, I, I, what? Uh, did you ever think you would play sports as a living? Or yeah, I always, uh, I always wanted to growing up. That was, that was kind of the biggest goal. Um, probably once I got to high school and college, it really became a goal. But growing up, you know, when I was younger, I just kind of liked to focus on having as much fun with my friends as I could and just trying to, you know, fall in love with the game at that point. And then once I got a little bit older, then I kind of, you know, had the goal of playing professionally. So, In high school, um, did you ever, when, when you were in high school and college, did you meet anyone else who made it to... To become a professional athlete? Um, when I was in high school, I'm trying to think. There's been a couple guys from around my area that have made um, made it to the big leagues and been in professional baseball and guys who I had known. But nobody I played with in high school. But once I got to college, I had played with a couple guys who had been drafted previously, um, you know, got drafted, and then I started playing summer ball in college as well in the Northwoods League in Wisconsin. And that's where I met a lot of guys that, um, you know, probably 20, 30 guys have been drafted since I played with them. And none of them have made it to the big leagues yet, but I'd say in the next couple of years, quite a few of them will probably make it to the big leagues. Um, do you know any names off the top of your head? Yeah, I, um, I'd say probably the, the one you'll probably really want to know here in the next couple of years is Bryson Stott. I played with him two years ago in the Northwoods League. and. He was our shortstop. He was the 14th overall draft pick this year by the Phillies in the 2019 draft. Um, so he'll probably be a big leaker for sure. Uh, he's probably one of the best players I've played with. So definitely a name you'll probably know in the next couple of years. Nice, nice. Um, speaking of which, which team did you grow up rooting for? I grew up rooting for the St. Louis Cardinals. I grew up about an hour east of St. Louis on the Illinois side. And, um, yeah, I grew up watching guys like Adam Wainwright and Chris Carpenter with the Cardinals and just kind of emulated myself after them a little bit. And it was always fun to go to Cardinal games when I was growing up. Nice, nice. Um, speaking of which, did you ever wonder what would happen if you got drafted by the Cardinals? Yeah, I think growing up, you know, that would have been my first choice. But then I, then I kind of realized I don't care who takes me, whatever team – you know, thinks I'm good enough to play for him, then, you know, I respect that team enough to play for him. And I think a lot of people are kind of the, the same way. You grow up idolizing a team, but then you get older and you kind of realize baseball is a business and you could get, you know, drafted by your favorite team or you could be on your favorite team and then in a, in a blink you're traded or, um, you know, stuff like that. So I think a lot of guys, you know, in my position don't really care who you play for as long as you're playing. So. Yeah. I agree, and so, what did it feel like when you got drafted? So, I wasn't actually drafted. I was a senior free agent signed. Um, so, the Mets, or the, sorry, the Braves had just uh, called me one morning and asked me to sign with them. So, I uh, got on a flight to Danville, Virginia, and I played in the rookie league with them. But whenever I got the phone call, it was definitely pretty special. I was with my parents, and... Um, pretty special moment for us and all my other family members got to call them and uh it was kind of our dream wasn't just my dream it was kind of my parents dream and my dream and um definitely you know able to fulfill that and it was a pretty cool experience so you've mentioned your family a lot well how supportive were they with your with your guys's dream of you playing yeah that's a good question i i, I think a lot of i mean i definitely wouldn't have been where i was without my family i think a lot of guys will say the same thing and I'm probably a little biased towards mine, but they gave me every opportunity I, I could to get where I was. And, um, you know, and then again, it was up to me to really capitalize on those opportunities, and I was able to. But definitely could not have been where I was without them financially and, you know, just supporting me and, you know, in many ways. So. so they helped you a lot with financial reasons. Did they help you put you through college? And if so, where did you go to college? Yeah, so I went to Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. It's about 20 minutes east of St. Louis. It's a 
mid-major Division One school in the Ohio Valley Conference. But yeah, they were. Uh, that was that was uh, probably about an hour. I was about an hour east of, of there. My family was when when I was growing up. So they were relatively close to to where they could come to every game. But that's something my parents, you know, they were good about. Is they didn't miss any games really in my whole life. So that was you know definitely good for me. Yeah, and so. What other colleges did you think about going to? Like, did you ever think about going to ISU, Illinois State University? Yeah, that was that was um, on my list. That was a couple, there was a couple different schools. I had actually signed really early my sophomore year of college. I was a, I went to a junior college as well. I went to Kaskaskia um, Junior College my freshman and sophomore year, um, and I was I committed real early to SIUE as a sophomore so i didn't really give many other schools opportunities to look at me just because that was kind of a school i wanted to go to it was close to home they made a good offer and it just kind of worked out that way so where would you think you'd be if you hadn't gotten the offer from uh the southern Union, southern illinois like what college do you think you would have gone if they hadn't offered yeah, I probably would have just found the uh, you know the best place that was offered me. I never really had a dream college school to go to. I went to baseball camps growing up, like at the University of Illinois and Vanderbilt University, and those are pretty cool schools to go to and kind of visit. And you know, would have loved to go to hear those schools, but at the time, SIUE was the only one that had offered, and um, I just kind of took the offer right away. Yeah, and so how um. Long have you been playing baseball? So I probably started when I was about four or five years old, if I had to guess. I know I played some t-ball probably when I was five, and uh, just kind of never turned back from that sport. I mean, baseball was my my love there for a while. I played golf in high school as well, and I played a little bit of basketball growing up. So I tried to um, be diverse with the sports and kind of be busy all year round and not just focus on baseball throughout the whole year. Just kind of have different, you know, different things to do other than just baseball so I didn't get burnt out. Yeah. So you played golf. Um, do you think if you didn't choose to pursue baseball that you could pursue a career in golf? I like to think I could have. I, I like to tell my friends that I think I could have as well. I, um, I'm, a, I'm just an average golfer, but I like to talk like I'm a really good golfer, especially around my friends. But I think I, um, if I wasn't pursuing baseball in college, I think I could have played uh, college golf somewhere as well. Nice, nice. And what type of pitches do you throw when you play? So I threw a four-seam fastball, a two-seam fastball occasionally. Didn't really throw a whole lot of those. And then I threw a change-up. But the pitch that I think got me to where I was was my slider. And so I was kind of a, I'm a smaller right-handed pitcher. I was five foot ten, so I didn't really have, you know, the power fastball. So I had to have a pitch that I could use to get people out. And I'd say my slider was definitely the, my out pitch and the pitch that really got me to where I was. Nice, nice. Um, how fast do you think each of those pitches were? Um, On average. I yeah, I know my four-seam fastball at the absolute highest that I ever got gun was 93. And I didn't hit that a lot. I mean, I was more of like a high 80s into the low 90s type guy. But like I said, like I really needed my, my out pitch and my off speed pitches to kind of help me get to where I was going. Nice, nice. So, speaking of your slider, did you model it or loan it from anyone in particular? Or is it kind of your own creation? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so, I. I, I would say a little bit of both. I I remember watching Adam Wainwright when I was growing up on his, you know, how he gripped his curveball and specifically on his slider as well. And he had his index finger up as he was throwing, as I'm sure you've maybe seen people throw with their index finger up. And I just kind of started playing catch with that, and it just kind of stuck. And then I had, like, a different grip with it, different pressure points with my thumb, and just kind of did my own pitch. And I think that's the biggest thing with you know, youth pitchers and high school pitchers, college pitchers, even pro pitchers that, you know, you're constantly, whenever you have a good pitch, make sure you throw it, but then your other pitches, you're constantly experimenting, um, you know, grips and just kind of playing catch with it and repetitions on how to throw it. And that's, that's ultimately how you'll be, be a better pitcher and have better grips and be able to throw more consistently. Nice. And um, have you ever considered 
like doing something else in sports when, when like after you play, have you ever thought about like, being a scout or a broadcaster or something else no. in sports? Yeah. Yeah, there was a there was a time where I you know thought maybe I wanted to go into coaching because throughout the years I've done a lot of lessons and clinics type stuff like that where I work with kids and I enjoy working with kids uh, when it comes to sports and specifically baseball. But um, right now, so I'm I just got done playing this past year. I'm doing like commercial insurance. So I'll be selling insurance, so not sports related. But you know, down the road, I think when I have kids and I um, you know want to get back into it, I'll definitely get back into sports. Um, probably baseball coaching. So, do you think you'll like continue to watch and follow baseball? Yeah, I will for sure. I, I still watch baseball or the MLB Network. I watch that pretty much every day. Um, the one thing I'm sure a lot of guys that get done playing will tell you, and um, this is kind of my personal thing, is you know, I, I don't really. As far as baseball, the game of baseball, I'm not mad at the game of baseball for, you know, when my time was over, I was done playing. But a lot of guys, you know, when they get done playing, they, they just really don't want to be around baseball for a couple of years, especially going to the MLB game. I know the first MLB game I went to after I was released, it was kind of tough to watch. It was just, didn't really want to be there. And it was just kind of, you know, maybe I was burned out on baseball. Maybe I was tired of baseball for a while. But I think I'll, I'll definitely get over that for a while. And, Definitely get back into baseball in the next couple years, but I still watch baseball quite often. So. Yeah, and then do you collect baseball cards? Like most of my followers and listeners do, as it's I start out as a card account. Account like you collect sports memorabilia, especially baseball. Yeah, I'm probably. Um, I, I try to consider myself one of the biggest sports memorabilia nerds in minor league baseball. Last year when I was playing, I, I, uh, you know, grew up collecting all kinds of baseball cards and stuff like that and just kind of never really I maybe stopped collecting like you know buying cards but I still even to this day I still go through a lot of baseball cards and um it, it's pretty cool to see some coaches that I've had in their baseball card and some friends and some mentors that I've had through the years that have baseball cards and then to finally have my own was a pretty cool experience too so I've, I've definitely um collected many of baseball cards over the years and still think it's pretty cool so Okay, I have a few more questions about baseball cards. Have you ever thought about making a card account and getting into buying, selling, or trading cards again? Like I do on Card Collection 99. Yeah, I saw your Instagram page. I don't, I don't think I'll ever get into that or plan on doing that. Um, no specific reason. I just, I just probably won't ever. But I, I do enjoy um, going through all my baseball cards and. If I see a baseball card shop or something like that, I definitely will, you know, stop in and just kind of look around and see what they have. I think it's always cool. It's kind of a piece of history to always look at. It. And I look, that's how I look at baseball cards, just kind of pieces of history. And it's pretty cool and exciting to look at. So, although you mentioned when you when you had your own card, it was one of the greatest experiences of your life. Do you, like, have a lot of them from Tops, like, with you? Or no? Yeah, I, um... Uh, so Pops had sent me quite a few of them, and um, my mom had probably bought, I don't know how many hundreds of them. So I have, you know, a little amount of cards, and I've definitely given out my share, and there's been quite a few people send some cards to my house, and I've signed those, and I really enjoy that, because I, I grew up, I did that a lot when I was a kid. I used to send baseball cards to players, you know, stadiums and stuff like that, and they'd sign them, send them back. So that's a pretty cool experience getting to do that. Um, but yeah, with the baseball card, it was um, so it was the Topps Pro debut. So it's kind of like the top prospects and you know, in the league. And obviously, I wasn't a top prospect; I was a senior free agent signed. But I had known a guy who worked at Topps, or had a you know connection with a guy who worked at Topps, and he asked me if I wanted a card. And um, I didn't have any really professional pictures, so I had to actually go take my own picture. And my dad was able to. He's the one who took the picture of my base, or took, took the picture um, that's on my baseball card, and we sent it to the tops. And one of my buddies, actually, he's the one who kind of cropped the picture because it was kind of snowy outside, as you can tell in the background of the baseball card. There's some snow in the background, so that's kind of the you know sentimental side of that baseball card. Good story that probably a lot of people don't know about that baseball card. Yeah. So you say that you used to send uh, cards to stands and places, and that you've gotten a few. Like, would you? 
like continue to do that and if so would you want to give an address where people could do that or if not that's understandable yeah i, I think um i i would i wouldn't mind you know giving up my address i'll just have people if they want to message me for the personal address they can and i don't i don't mind that at all to to sign as many cards for whoever would want my autograph by any means i mean i um, I think it's, I'm definitely honored every time somebody asks me, but um, it's a pretty cool experience. So I, I wouldn't mind, you know, people direct messaging me and asking me now. Okay. Well, thank you for coming on my podcast. I really appreciated it. And maybe you could come on again another time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me, Justin. And good luck with your broadcasting career. I think that's pretty cool. I think you can stick with that. You did a pretty good job today. Um, so just have me on whenever, man. Thank you, and hope to see you soon. Okay, bye, Justin. Bye.